How's it going? I'm Kim. Welcome back to another video. Well, a few weeks ago I got to play with this guy. Um, this is Fujifilm's new 150-600 to tele uh, lens. Uh, great for birding, I guess, and general wildlife, sports, airplane hunting, the usual kind of stuff that I never really do. Uh, except for the last couple of years where I've been getting into wildlife quite a bit more. Uh, I only have a 50-140 uh, to 140 lens and I've managed to borrow 100-400 to 400 from a friend, which has been amazing, so thanks to Dan for that. I've had some great shots with those things, but I always felt like just a little bit more reach would be really where it's at with this. Um, and apparently I wasn't alone, uh, so Fuji have listened and they've delivered this guy. So this is a pre-production unit I've had pre-launch for a few weeks, uh, I've been out testing it. Uh, we have local swans, they live at a lake at the end of my house on an island, so they're pretty well protected from people and dogs and they feel pretty comfortable. So they've been nesting quite a bit lately. Uh, I've managed to get down a couple of mornings, uh, hoping to find the eggs hatching. And one morning I managed to do just that, so here's a quick fit, it's beautiful. Our local swans have just hatched. It's pretty exciting, I caught it on camera. Uh, out shooting with Fujifilm's new 150 to 600. I was kind of hoping that would happen this morning. It was about this day last year they did this, so right on time. So very cute little things all together. So hopefully the next few days I'll get some more. Uh, I was up at five this morning editing yesterday's shoot to get it out of the way so I could do this today. Uh, I'm gonna go for coffee. I'm sure what else would you be doing? <laughs> Yeah, pretty nice, right? What an amazing sight to see. Getting up at five in the morning is not me, I gotta say. Uh, too many years in the music industry, too many late nights. I'm still not used to it all these years later. Um, so for all those birders and other people who go out and do this, like, you know, hats off to you guys. Uh, and birding is something I found really difficult to do. Uh, I think it just takes a lot of practice, particularly when you've got 600 millimeters, or 840 if you stick a teleconverter on it. Uh, that's a really, really tiny angle to try and capture a bird at. So uh, I've now uh, renewed amazement at all these tight shots of these beautiful birds uh, got by these people who go out and shoot so much better than I can about all this kind of stuff. But I'll try and do this lens a little bit of justice when I have it uh, to see what it's about and get some shots. Um, I've been up in Phoenix Park shooting some deer. Uh, that's a local park near me. It is, well I live in Ireland, everywhere is pretty local, right? It's a small island. Uh, so. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, uh, it's the biggest wall fence in Europe apparently, if that's true. It might be just something the Irish say, I don't know. But uh, they have lots of deer there. They're pretty friendly, but obviously that's their home we're visiting. And I think that's a golden rule of uh, wildlife photography, is that you're the visitor, so you need to respect their land and how they get up to their daily things that they do, if that makes sense. Um, it's very early in the morning for me, so if I'm rambling a bit, excuse me on that one. No coffee yet. Didn't want to wake the rest of my house up with my coffee machine. But anyway, uh, yeah, so the deer is keep some distance and got some shots and you can have a look at what went on there. Oh, how's it going? Don't you love when you have to get up early and uh decide you want to be a wildlife photographer even though you just mostly shoot people in the afternoon and have an easier life with that. Ah, I just like getting up at five, but my own fault because I didn't rig my camera up properly, so I had to get up a little bit early and reset all that up. Um, but now I'm out early, um, well before everything else opens in Phoenix Park in Dublin. And I'm just gonna see if I can shoot some deer. Um, there's one down there and there's some up here over there and I have with me today Fujifilm's 150 to 600 telephoto lens which is brand new out. Uh, I've been testing this the last week or so. Uh, myself and Sean have been doing that. Lightroom vlog, give him a shout and uh, yeah, uh, spoiler it's pretty good but uh, let's see how we get on today with it because I'm going to shoot some deer, I'm going to shoot some animals over in Dublin Zoo today um, and I've got a few of the bits and pieces to do. Uh, some motorbikes, they're kind of noisy, so hopefully I'll be all right there with that. Uh, I've got special permission to be at a race on Sunday in a couple of days' time, so I'm looking forward to getting into doing that one. Um, bring my ear defenders, of course, and see if I can uh, put this through its paces. Um, I'm going to shoot it on an X-T4 because I think that's probably the best camera for it to be on for the moment. But just as this is a prototype, a pre-production lens, not final firmware, and it isn't optimized for the camera yet, and the camera's firmware hasn't been updated to allow for all the stuff on this like these buttons which I'll tell you about later um, 
you know, we're a little bit limited in what we can test today, and I can't uh, really show you any um, zooming in on the photos and do any huge tests like that. But uh, yeah, I've been pretty happy with what I've been seeing when I'm testing it. So now it's video time, and I'm going to go shoot some deer. So there is the 150 to 600 rigged up. I'm just shooting some focus uh, pull testing here. There's the reeds I was focusing on, and in the background we've got Castletown House, so you can kind of get an idea of just how tight 600 millimeter is. This is an iPhone 11 with its standard camera, which I think is 26 millimeter. Uh, you'll get an idea from there. So here we are focused on the branches there that you saw in the last clip. I'm going to rack focus out towards infinity now and if you keep an eye on the branches you'll see just how little movement there is in those as I focus on out towards Castan House in the distance. Uh, sorry if the camera is jumping around a little bit but uh, 600 millimeters can get a little bit wobbly unless you're on a big tripod which is one thing to consider but uh, I think you can see it's very well corrected here. There's very little movement in the frame as you focus from infinity towards near focus and I think that's going to be a really really good lens for video users as you can see here I'll just do it again real quick so yeah there you go uh, a great job by Fuji I think it just shows they've pulled out a lot of stops uh, on this one if you can excuse the pun and anyway back to video the deer and that kind of stuff so what else to say about this lens um Weight is kind of something that's always going to be there with a big lens like this, particularly if you've got something with a complicated enough optical structure like this guy. A lot of expensive glass in here, because Fuji always seems to push for the optical quality and worry about the weight later. Um, but, you know, a big heavy strap, it's not so bad taking the weight off if you put it on a tripod. Um, uh, I've been out for several days over the last few weeks with the thing shooting for a good amount of the day. And yeah, you can feel it's a bit heavy, but it's not that heavy. Uh, I didn't, wasn't really tired after carrying it around, it certainly wasn't dragging out of me so you know it feels like kind of slightly heavier than the 50 f1 if that's what you're used to or if you can get the idea of that one but on a long lens like this it's not so bad uh, the lens has ois in it obviously um not sure the amount of stops yet uh, i believe something like seven stops can be attained if you attach it to a camera these days um, which is pretty tremendous um i'll put some handheld video uh, up for you just so you can see the stability of it uh, i won't stabilize it in post that's just it out of the camera but bear in mind that it's on an xt4 which has ibis but none of this is optimized for each other yet so um pre-production unit it'll probably get a bit better uh, um but to be honest, I'm pretty happy with the results. That's in it already, considering at 600 millimeters, even with a 1.4 tele converter on, you're getting pretty stable shots, um, which I think is quite phenomenal. Uh, I really do. Um, tripod collar on here can rotate around. So if you're on a tripod, you can tilt camera so you can go vertical and horizontal on that one. Uh, it also is removable and uh, you can just take it off here by unscrewing this guy which I have on a bit tight so if I unscrew that it doesn't come off it's got this little button you can push here and then that allows it to pop off quite easily uh, on the back of that is a uh, can you see that it's a quarter 20 on the back of that there um, so that's quite good uh, meaning you can just keep this on a strap and are free then to take this off um, I really you know like I said it's not that heavy uh, put it back on it uh, clicks back in and that's then put on by a safety catch which you can then screw back down uh, with this screw keeping it nice and tight of course um, the aperture ring is here on the back in white so it's kind of hidden away as opposed to two black things um, there's no markings on it so you're just gonna have to rely on what's in your camera um, you might also know the switches down here there's no OIS switch which seems to be a bit of a trend now coming up with Fujifilm um, that has to be controlled from the camera so uh, as I said this hasn't got the firmware on it yet to, uh, the camera rather hasn't got the firmware on it yet and it is a pre-production lens so I don't know if I'm gonna have a different set of menu systems to drive the lens or not I presume I, I did um, I would, sorry, uh, with that. Uh, also on the lens, you know, a, a, a little set button here, and that relates to uh, these little guys here. So you've got predefined focus on these, and uh, you just push the button and you can jump to that focus point. You could, for example, set this button to somewhere like a goal, and if you're shooting on different parts of the field and the ball goes down that way, you can just quickly push the button and your AF will jump to that point. So for those kind of things, I think it's pretty handy. It'd be nice to be able to try it out, but this is a pre-production unit, and ooh, that got windy. <laughs> I hope you can hear. 
here. Um, it's a pre-production unit, uh, so I can't really test it out yet. Um, but uh, other buttons that are on here is a focus limiter, and that works out pretty well. Um, I've only used it when I was trying to capture some birds, which I admit I am absolutely tremendously terrible at. Uh, I've got a newfound respect for people who get these beautiful birds in flight uh, photos, because I can't seem to track them for love or money. Um, they just wobble all over the place. I never know where they've gone. <laughs> so I guess I need a bit more practice at that one. Um, so that goes from five uh, meters up to the full range, which I think is helpful there. Uh, you have your aperture control in there, whether you want it automatic or manual, uh, again, from here or the camera. And then you have your presets, uh, which is AFL, preset, or AF. So uh, you can have your autofocus drive on, on this setup with those things. Again, the camera's firmer isn't in, so I'm not gonna test any of that uh, for the moment. Uh, hopefully that video will come out more towards the summer. Uh, did I say that already? Maybe. Please remember that I am a Fujifilm X photographer, so probably going to be tinted a little bit with what I say, but that's more driven for the love I have for shooting with these cameras and the joy I got for shooting them. Uh, photography is a real passion of mine. Um, I hope that's something that I share with you from watching this video, and I hope I can encourage you to go out and do something you don't normally do. For me, that's been wildlife. After two years of lockdown, I kind of got interested in shooting what's in my back garden and my local park, because that's all I could really get out and shoot. Um, and I've discovered it's a relaxing time. Oh, how's it going? Down at Mandela Park today, uh, getting a track day under my belt. Uh, first time I've ever shot a track. I'm down here with Fujifilm's new XF 150-600. to See how this behaves on the track. Um, I've got some motorbikes flying around, about 150 of them. It's a very busy day. It's kind of sunny, a bit cloudy, so uh, get my earplugs out there. Uh, it's not a bad day to be out on track. Um, trying to get to grips with how this lens works for motorsports, something I've never shot before, so a complete newbie with that. Um, bit difficult this morning trying to nail the settings in. I think 600 millimeter on a crop is probably a little bit too long, at least for this track. I guess if you had a bigger track, you'd be okay. But as you can see, I'm track side here uh, with gracious thanks to Mandela Park for letting me mooch in, uh, particularly Ian Beatty and uh, Darren from Bike to Bike because he's running the track day today. He's super as always, those guys, uh, you know, good guys. If you ever want to do a good track day, you know where Mandela Park is, right? Come on down, it's good. Uh, I spent a lot of time running around here on track myself back in my Ducati days, so that's all good. Anyway, uh, back to the lens. Yeah, so uh, quite something uh, if you need that kind of reach out here. Um, I'm getting nice tight shots, really pushing the autofocus of the X-T4 on this uh, lens. Now, the problem I'm having is that the lens isn't optimized and the camera isn't optimized for each other. So uh, I think some firmware is needed to be put into the cameras to get them to work properly with this lens. Um, I've used this lens on a newer camera, which is coming out soon, and the autofocus is blindingly brilliant. That's all I can say about it. It's very, very good. So um, looking forward to getting my hands on that camera as soon as it comes out, and hopefully I'll be able to do another test with some equipment. Um, big thanks to Fujifilm for giving me this lens for a few weeks to try out. Uh, I've been pretty busy shooting lots of wildlife with it, which is something that probably suits my slightly slower pace of photography than I'm used to, what with people in studios and products and all that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, it's kind of fun to get out, uh, shoot some birds and shoot some sports uh, and go off and try and find some gorillas to shoot and that kind of stuff. Uh, yeah, interesting time. Uh, what can I say about the lens though? Um, you know, it, it is heavy. It's uh, 150 to 600, but not as heavy as some of the other ones. Um, that's because it's f8, um, which I thought might be a bit of a problem at first, but having shot with it for a while, it's not a problem at all. Here's a shot of 12,800. Modern camera sensors are very good. If you have daylight, you don't have to worry about it too much. I think the only time you'll have a bit of problems is if it gets to be nighttime, and uh, then you might have a few issues with it. But yeah, otherwise not so bad. But the lens in use is nice. It's got a lovely dampened zoom ring on it, which is a very short throw. Um, it's got a, a loose enough focus ring, so you can really pull in and, and, and out of that quite easily if you want to. Uh, there's no resistance in it. Um, a lot like Fuji's lenses, it's fly by wire, so. Another track day starting, ready to go back to shooting. I might have to do all this later, I don't know, it's very noisy. Okay, so in summing up, well, it's a 150 to 600 millimeter zoom lens. You know, it costs 2100 euro, 
all that aside the point, it's just really nice to use. If I could sum it up in one sentence, it would be, I have to give it back tomorrow and I don't want to. I want to hang on to it. So I may end up better ordering my own one. Uh, ooh, we'll see. I've had this for a couple of weeks and been slowly getting used to it, seeing how it operates. Um, and I've been very impressed with it. Uh, used it for lots of different things that it was designed to be used for, like, you know, a little bit of birding, some airplane spotting, some motorsports. Didn't get down to do any track sports or field sports with it yet, but uh, time being what it is, I only have it for a few weeks and there's only so much I could book in uh, with other work in the way and that kind of stuff. But yeah, other work in the way of me having fun with a uh, new lens from Fujifilm that I have. Um, this is a prototype lens, so can't really dive into all the images too much with it. Um, it's also not mated to the body properly yet. There's some firmware has to go on to get them to talk uh, to make all the functions work brilliantly well. So hopefully I'll get it back after that and can really see what it's all about. But overall, I've been pretty impressed with the optical performance. All the way up to 600 millimeter, it's sharp, you know, it's really what you're looking for in a modern lens these days and Fujifilm have responded pretty well. I know a lot of people will complain about the F8 in there, but in use it's, uh, you know, it's, it's not really a big thing. Uh, F8's a nice depth of field at 600 millimeter and with modern sensors being so well these days and particularly how they work, once there's daylight around, you're not really going to get much noise, even if you crank it all the way up to 12,800. So having said that, I think if you're looking for a good lens to go out and shoot sports or wildlife for, I think it should be on your bucket list. Uh, it's definitely one to consider. If you do need something that's a faster aperture, there's always Fujifilm's f2 200mm prime with the teleconverter in the box. Um, that will give you the equivalent, you know, of a much longer lens. Uh, but again, that's also much more expensive, heavier. You know, there's a lot of trade-offs to be had. So if you're looking for an everyday lens that you can go out and put on your camera, get a good zoom range, capture a range of moving subjects, then I think this is something you should consider. I know I'm going to consider it. Uh, over the 100 to 400, sure, F8 rather than F4, but I think the sharpness makes up for that. Talk to you later. Bye.